Thanks for staying with us. We hear that in Cross River State, the Speaker, Elbert Ayambem, has been impeached, or rather, using the right terminology, has been removed. Elbert Ayambem has been uh, removed as Speaker of, of the Cross River State House of Assembly. The Speaker was impeached or removed on Wednesday by 17 members out of the 25-member House over allegations of misappropriation of funds. The uh, removal motion was uh, moved by Honorable Efiom Ekarika, representing Calabar South, one constituency, and seconded by Honorable Omang Charles Omang, representing Bekwara State constituency. Right Honorable Elvad uh, Ayambem was elected Speaker of the 10th Cross River State House of Assembly in June 2023. Our guest this morning is Honorable Kingsley Ntui, a member representing a Tung, uh, in the uh, State Assembly. Good morning and welcome to the program, Honorable. Good morning. Good morning. Um, your, okay, let me now start by saying your brother, because uh, <laughs> Ikom and Etung, they are like brother and sister, his mother and, and, and daughter, uh, so to speak. Uh, Honorable Ayambem has been removed. Bring us up to speed uh, what led to this and what the situation is right now in the Cross River State House of Assembly. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. First, my name is Honorable King Slim Chui. I'm a member representing a Tung state constituency, the cocoa giant producers of the states. Mm -hmm. nice. Yes, Albert, my colleague representing a come to state constituency, was elected in June 2023. And um, as the speaker of the Cross River State House of Assembly. But um, as we move on in the assembly, um, the required leadership that was expected, we couldn't get it. So b the basic reason why he was removed from office, not impeached, was as a result of um, gross incompetence and financial misappropriation. Okay. Uh, well, does the speaker really have the, the powers to do and undo, so to speak, in the Nigerian parlance, uh, all those things that he has been accused of doing? Uh, doesn't he, ha he have the lieutenants that have been aiding him? And how has he been succeeding all this while uh, that the move for removal is just coming now? Well, um, we... We had some expectations before, expect, before electing Albert. And we had every assurance that if he became the um, speaker, he was going to be very democratic and would work in synergy with his other, other 24 members. But very unfortunately, or very unfortunate rather, Albert became the Mugabe of our time. He became autocratic, he became uh, authoritative, and he became a tyrant. In a democratic system, you, you don't work like a military general. The other members, the 24 members in a house of 25 members who are elected, you are your colleagues. They are your colleagues. You are just one among equals to provide leadership. But in a situation where you no longer consult, the well-constituted leadership that was expected to be consulted in making taking decisions would not be consulted by Elvet. So as a result of that, it only became not necessary because he has violated um, um, the rules of the House and the, the, the content of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. So um, he, he has only spent about 11 months in office, and now he has been impeached. Him being impeached, what does that mean for that state or for the people um, of the constituency that he's representing? Hello. Yes, can you hear me, sir? Sorry. I, I can hear you. I had disruption. Okay. Okay. So I was asking that um, he was only in office for about 11 months, and now he has been impeached, or he has been removed. I can um, hear you. Yes. 
Okay, so can you hear me properly now? Yeah. Let me just take my question. Yes, I can. Okay, so I, I was saying that um, he, he has only been in office for about 11 months um, or less than 12 months, less than one year. And now he's been impeached or he's been removed, if we can use that word. Now, what does that mean in terms for the people of the constituency that he was representing? Uh -huh. He's still going to be a member of the Cross River Serious Assembly. He's going to have his seat, but he will no longer be the presiding officer. Hmm. Because at any moment, we're going to elect a new speaker for the House. Yeah, but there's not supposed to be any void in leadership, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was surprised that um, when the 17 members moved that motion for his impeachment or removal, there was no alternative made uh, for someone else to be elected. And it's taking, you know, in politicking and politics, uh, 24 hours is a very long time. Mm -hmm. So what are your plans like, you know, because people expected that you were going to announce a, a new leader immediately, but you didn't. What went wrong, and what's the plan for that? Well, for now, I can tell you that the 17 of us are speakers. Hmm. Because there's a provision of the law that provides that um, if we, for instance, our duty is lawmaking, if we have any emergency at this time from the executive arm, we'll quickly assemble and nominate one of us to act as a speaker. At the interim, we are yet to take a decision and um, to elect um, his replacements. But, but it's still, is there still an option on the table? Like uh, there could still be negotiations and uh, he will be whipped into line uh, mm -hmm. that you can say, okay, let's reinstate him if he has uh, become repentant and he wants mm -hmm, to do mm -hmm. what we are expecting him to do. Is that option still on the table? Maybe this was just a rude awakening for yes. him. The, the, the Hello, sir. The network has taken effect. Sorry, can you take that again? Hello. Yes. yes. Hello. Yes. What did you say? We didn't okay. get you at that point. Uh, the the law has already taken effect. There's there won't be any reversal. Mm. The speaker with the allegations already spelled out has been removed. And the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria did not set any time for replacements. We are taking our time not to make a second mistake. We will elect the best amongst us to lead us. Now, the, the option seems to be narrowed because um, he is from the Central Central District, for instance, which uh, you belong to as well, and I, I think Obubra and uh, uh, Boki and all that. Uh, in the central central district does this is there some kind of um, power rotation or yes within the uh, assembly that we are sure that the next person is going to come from the central central district or is a free-for-all anybody can vie for it and anybody can be elected yeah there is there's an existing zoning system mm. in cross river states the governor is from the south the deputy governor is from the north, while the speaker is from the central senatorial districts. And um, within the central senatorial districts, there's what is known as Oli Common Olobura. The central senatorial districts comprises of six local governments. Those six LGAs are subdivided into three, three. You have Olobubra and Oli Common. Mm. And whereas um, the immediate past speaker of the Cross River State as part of assembly in the person of Senator Jules Etten Williams mm. was from the Olobura section of it. And that uh, the, the Senate for that senatorial district is also zoned to that area. So that is why the speaker was zoned to the old ECOM comprising of EME2, ECOM, and Boki. Mm. So our speaker is expected. to come from those three LGAs mentioned on that old registry. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, so um, the principle of elimination, which means one is out, is just the contending, mm. uh, just Etung and Boki right now. 
Well, I was going to ask, um, I know that this impeachment... No, ECOM can also still contest. If we find any member there, um, with the... Okay, ECOM has ECOM 1 and 2. Okay, I, I, I see now. ECOM has 1 and 2. Mm. And he's from there, which means yeah. uh, he's uh, from ECOM 2 constituency. Yeah, Boki, Boki has two members. Boki 1 and 2. Mm. Etong has 1. ECOM has 2. So there are options. You can pick any within the three LGS. Oh, okay. All right. So I was going to ask, um, because I know that you were one of the lawmakers who um, signed the impeachment notice. Now, in having to get a new speaker, even though we have already narrowed the, the people who can vie for that office, mm -hmm. what are certain qualities you're looking out for? Because you just said... Um, with the former speaker, there was misappropriation of funds, there was tyranny, there was a lot that was going on. So what are some qualities, um, you know, the entire lawmakers are looking in or looking at for a new speaker? We want a transparent leadership. We want a leadership of inclusiveness. We want a leadership who would always get himself involved in proper consultation, a leadership that will respect members and not treat members as if he employed them, mm -hmm. as a staff in his own private organizations or private organization. The constitution did not say so. Your colleagues are major stakeholders in the assembly. They are your colleagues. They are not your staff. They are not your subordinates. Mm. Okay. Um, so we want that kind of a leader who will take these factors into cognizance. And that leader will lead us well. Okay. And we also want a leader, a leader that would understand that the politics of Cross River State at this time has one leadership. All of us, under the dynamic leadership of His Excellency Senator Bastia Dero II, the executive governor of Cross River State. Our total allegiance and loyalty is tied to him because the governor is doing well with good intentions to lift our state from the backwaters of obscurity to a pedestal of limelight. Any leader that would come, that would perceive, that would be antagonistic to the governor, that leader is not the kind of leader that would, would select to be our speaker. That is the beginning point of it. Yeah, I was going to ask you the relationship between the executive and the legislature in a cross river state. You know, uh, what you are, you know, you are a, a member of the legislature and the sweet prince, as everybody calls him in cross river state, is the governor. So I was going to ask you, what's, what's the, the relationship like? How have you been functioning, even with a tyrannical leader like Elbert, as you're, you're putting it? have you been functioning and how do you hope to steer the ship uh, from now on? We have a super fantastic relationship with our governor. He's the father. We have a symbiotic relationship between the executive and the legislative arm. Our governor is a wonderful governor. He's a godsend. So he's actually a sweet prince. So there are no issues. The legislative arm, even the 17 of us who endorse that document, we are 100%. I mean, absolutely loyal to the governor. I, I don't know if that's Because he's doing well. News? He's transforming the face of Cross River State to something else beyond our imaginations and expectations. Mm. Okay. That's amazing. I, I, I don't know if that was what the opposition will say or the ordinary man will say, but I'm, mm. I'm glad that you have that confidence because having confidence in the governor or the executive is one thing. But I don't also know whether uh, if the legislatures are, legislators are loyal, as the word yeah, is, to the, the, to the uh, executive, it's a good thing for Crossivarians or not. But I'm glad you no, say you have a symbiotic a relationship. Uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me justify the fact Mm. that um, or for us to agree that it's a good thing. Now, I'm a member of the All Progressive Congress. Yes. My governor is a member of the All Progressive Congress. 
That means we're a product of a family of the APC. So um, we have one vision. Hello? Honorable Tui, we don't seem to be getting your audio anymore. Yeah, um, sorry, it was a call. So in spite of um, the constitutional division, mm. where you find the three arms of government working in the judiciary, but can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, we yeah, can I hear in spite of the, uh, I said in spite of the constitutional divisions um, among the three arms of government, that is the executive judiciary and the legislative arm working the, uh, separately to checkmate each or, or the, the, the working separately. But you see, you, you must have one vision and that vision is um, for the economic development of that state if you do not have that synergy you won't you know effectively achieve the purpose um of which a democratic um system was put in place okay that doesn't mean that we will not do our job as um a parliament Okay, honorable. I, I, you've made Which that. Which is like a watchdog. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad that what is happening is happening. Uh, I'd like to come home and see a wonderful cross river that is flowing with milk and honey. We, we used to have a cross river that everybody was, you know, um, admiring, a cross river that everybody wanted to visit, a cross river that was uh, like Nigeria to the world. And we hope that it's going to get to that limelight once more and even surpass what we used to have in the days of the Donald Dukes and even the, um, the, uh, uh, the next uh, uh, governor that we had and all that. But we'd like to thank you this morning for coming and telling us what really is the problem uh, back in Cross River State. And we do hope that all the issues will be resolved and you continue to work symbiotically with the uh, executive arm and the legislature to bring about good governance for the people of Cross River State. So thank you so much, Honorable Kingsley Tui, for being a part of our program this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, Honorable Kingsley Tui is a member representing Etung uh, State Constituency in Cross River State. And he was telling us what is going on in Cross River State House of Assembly, where the speaker, Albert Ayambem, has been removed. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>